Hey guys, it's May May, and um, why on earth would you be confused about adhesives? <laughs> oh my gosh, look at this. And listen, I didn't go buy anything. This is all from my craft room, and here's what I thought I was going to do. I'm just going to show you what I use and tell you what each thing does, um, and why I use it for what I use it for. And I think that'll be the best way to explain adhesives to you. So don't worry, I'm going to clean this up. We're going to break it down and look at everything one, two, or three at a time to make it a little easier. Wow, that was a big mess. I can see why it is confusing. So we're just going to break it down a little bit. I think I'm going to start in the paper crafting realm because I think that's probably where a lot of you, a lot of my viewers are. But I'm going to get into other stuff too. But let's talk paper crafting. And let's really talk about putting paper to paper. There are so many options for that. Things like Tombow, um, things like this Bonding Memories, which you also might find marketed as Zig two-way glue pens, and I'll talk about those in a second. Um, you might find tape runners like these. This is a lot of paper crafting products. And here's another tape runner. I haven't even taken out of the package yet. Here's another tape runner. See how, like, confusing it can get? All of these things do something different. So I'm just going to start with one and we'll go from there. So I'm going to move this stuff back out of the way. Then I'm going to start with Tombow Mono Liquid Glue. Okay. This is a Mono Multi Liquid Glue. Here's what that means. It can do one thing or it can do two things. One thing is it can be a permanent adhesion. You can take this guy, put it onto your um, project. While it's still wet, put your other piece on it, let it dry, and it's permanent. That's one way to do it. And I'll read that for you here. It says, for permanent bond, moderately apply glue and attach while still wet. That's what's important. Now, the other thing it can do is be a temporary bond. And the way you do that is you apply your adhesive to your project and let it dry completely with this one. Once you do that, it basically becomes a sticker. The adhesive will be sticky and you can just stick it on and move it around. And let me read that one for you. For removable bond, moderately apply glue, allow to completely dry, position the paper and remove um, and reposition as needed. Now that's pretty cool about this product. The other thing it does, it has a fine tip at the top, which is awesome, and it has a wider tip at the bottom. Now I tend to use this product in paper crafting. I have good luck with it unless, let me tell you the unless, okay? If this glue seeps out from the die cut that you're using, then let me do one. So I just have this scrap of paper, I'm gonna tear it in half, okay. Let's say that you were going to glue this piece to this piece, all right? And you put some of this glue onto the edge, like so. But some seeps out. I'm going to stick this down. Any of this glue that seeps out, when it dries, it's sticky. And that's something I don't like about Tombow. If you get it covered in there really good, you're fine. But this part that sticks out here, because it can be either or adhesive, this part, look, it is sticky. So unless you're going to make sure you have no seepage, I wouldn't use this one because that part, it's made to do that. It's made to be a temporary or a permanent bond. So any that's out here where air is, that's what it's going to do. And I do not like that about Tombow. I do love it if I get it in there and I don't have any extra seeping around. So I would suggest this one for not the tiniest pieces. You need to make sure that none of it seeps out or you'll have this happen. And this is in real time. It hasn't even dried yet. So there you go. Tombow. You hear a lot of people talk about that one. It's pretty popular. Let's talk about another product. This one. This is Zig Two Way. Well, it's not. This is close to my heart's version of Zig Two Way glue pen. Notice that it is made almost exactly the same. And I think, and don't quote me on this, at one point in time somebody told me it was made by the same company and everything. I'm trying to see if that's on here, but it doesn't say that. So, it works very much the same. This pen can do a dry bond, which is a temporary bond, or a wet bond, which is a permanent bond, a permanent which is a permanent bond, just like this one. So you put this one on, and if you adhere your pieces together while it's still wet, it's permanent. And if you do it while it's um, dry, it will be a temporary bond. Now, I use this one, I want to show you the tip. It's a lot like a pen, 
And so you can use this one to really get into some small spaces. Interestingly enough, I have not noticed with this one the stickiness like I do with the Tombow. So I use this one a lot more for those tiny little places. I just don't seem to get the residue or the sticky residue from this. And um, I like it for that. Zig Two Way or this pen work very much alike. The Zig is in a light blue container. I thought I had one, but I don't have one to show you. But they both work interchangeably. Since we're talking liquid glue, let's talk about Zip Dry. There are lots of things cool about Zip Dry, but there's one thing you need to know. It is very strong glue. It has a very, very strong odor. The vapors are hazardous, it says. It says extremely flammable. See cautions on the card. Let me see what it tells you about the vapors. The vapor is harmful. Contains petroleum distillates. Do not use near sparks, fire, flame, heated surfaces, or other sources of ignition. Use in a well-ventilated area and avoid prolonged breathing of vapors. Causes eye, nose, and throat irritation. I'm going to tell you something. That is true. <laughs> I was introduced to this by my friends at the card party, and they love it. I mean love it. I'm going to open it up. I don't have one open anywhere. But they love this stuff, and it works amazingly well. It is a fast drying glue. Can you see this? Fast drying for paper arts, and it works so well. It does not wrinkle the paper. That's important because I know a lot of times with wet glue, it wrinkles the paper. This one's made not to do that. So when you get this, you'll take this little lid off, and you will have this little piece at the top you have to bust into, like so. Probably shouldn't have done it that way, but I did. So <laughs> it is so strong to smell. And then you have this tip, which is nice that it comes with this tip that you can make very fine. See that? I love the bottle, the packaging. This product is made by Beacon. It is so strong. However, it is really good for putting your paper pieces together. Let me show you something I did with it. This is a couple of things I did with it. Now, those little beads, I put them down with it. I want you to see something. See the glimmer? on the paper that's the glue it dries clear but it also dries shiny so you have to be careful of that this i put down with it as well and it's it's still glittery but i mean glimmery behind it but it's not as bad and i didn't even get there's none on that bead i obviously did not glue it down all the way but that's another example of using it there it's really good i mean these guys are on so tight and this was done with the zip dry so if you don't mind the fumes or you have a very large room to work with this is a really good product, especially for doing card making, but it is so strong. So be very careful with this product when you use it. It is for paper crafting, okay? So that is important to know. On the back it says, surfaces must be clean and dust free. Unscrew the top, snip the tip, keep white cap. Oh, keep this cap. <laughs> Apply a thin bead of glued glue from the item's edge. Glue dries in five to 10 minutes, depending on the amount dried. It suggests that you take this cap off and put this one back on if you're going to store it and not use it for a long period of time. But I will tell you a tip that I learned from my craft friends. Take a paper clip and hook it onto this little circle right here. And when you take this off, you can take that paper clip and poke it into the stem. That way it will always be clear for you to use it. So that's zip dry. Really strong. So I should have not done this one first because it's really strong in my craft room right now. On the topic of permanent and temporary adhesive, these guys are actually very similar in the fact that they are, I think you'll be able to see this on here, that these are dot adhesives. Okay, so do you see that? They're on in a dot. They don't do, they're not a smooth, um, they're not a smooth piece of tape. They're little dots. And what I want to show you is this one is a permanent adhesive. Okay, so once it's down, it's down. This one is a temporary adhesive that you can roll off. That's how it's marketed. But I want to show you something. This one rolls off too. <laughs> so depending on how you're going to use it, they're kind of interchangeable. These are made by Herma, both of these. And I got these at TJ Maxx. I want to show you a refill. This is a refill of the... Um, tape for it. It is acid free so it is good for archival. Let's talk about that for a second too. Acid free, you want to make sure if you're going to have scrapbooks or you're going to do mini albums that you're going to put up for a long time, you want to make sure that your glue is acid free. That'll keep things from yellowing on you and um, changing colors which is really important. You can get the permanent version or the temporary version. The reason I want to point that out to you is because 
if you're doing something where you need a temporary bond, you want to pay attention to what you're purchasing. I'll show you what I use this one for. Do you remember me showing you this mess on the back of my um, Martha Stewart envelope portion of the scoreboard? This is what I do. I will glue, I will put some temporary down, which is there now, and then I'll put my paper down for the scoring, and that way it's stuck down. And when I want to get that off, I can just roll it off. But I haven't cleaned it. <laughs> Because it tends to lose its sticky anyway, so it doesn't get in the way next time. But it does roll off and you can clean it. So that's something I use my temporary adhesive for. I've even used it on the front sometimes if I need something to stay in place while I'm scoring. And it will clean off. I just didn't clean it yet. So that's what these are. Permanent, temporary. Okay? So the other thing about a dot adhesive that is sometimes good... If you're someone that might need to put something down and if you if it's crooked, it bothers you and you want to pick it up and move it, you're going to have better luck with that with a dot adhesive than you will with one that is a full line like an ATG. This gives you a little more leeway for repositioning, even though it is permanent. Let's talk about a tape runner from Elmer's. So simple. It is a dot adhesive, okay? Much like what we just saw. See that? Let's see if it'll roll off. This one, does. it does roll off. It's a little stickier, actually. But this bond is not as strong as the um, one I just showed you. This is going to be something, if you're a beginner, um, if you're doing a project that you don't have to have really, really, if you're doing cards or tags or something like that, you could use this to do paper-to-paper -paper adhesive. But it is a very simple, not-too-sticky product. So remember that when you're using it. What I have this for is they're very inexpensive, and sometimes I'll do classes with church groups and stuff like that, so I have a lot of these, and that way everybody can use a tape runner. Most of the time, the people at those parties have never done, have never used a tape runner, so I just use these so they can kind of experience it and just kind of do some crafting. I don't recommend this Elmer's tape runner for your everyday crafting if you're making cards or doing things like, you know, a lot, because I don't feel like this holds up long term. Okay, so there's that one. Then there is Tombow Tape Runner. This is um, the Tombow version of a tape runner. And what I want to show you is, I got it on clearance really cheap. It was half of that price even. But this is a power bond adhesive. It is extra strong, firmly adheres heavyweight paper, textured cardstock, and photos. It has a compact applicator with precision application. The adhesive bonds instantly, cleanly, and wrinkle-free. It is not refillable. This is important to see. It is not refillable. It is, however, acid-free and photo-safe. The reason I wanted to show you this, a friend of mine thought these were refills. Not that they were refillable, but she thought they were refills. So you need to read the package of whatever you're getting. This is an awesome handheld, nice, easy to use tape runner. It is a little funny that it looks like you should use it this way, but you don't. You use it this way. So it goes like this. And I don't love this. See how the tape pulls on this one? That's not my favorite. What they suggest is when you use this one that you slide it and instead of pulling up and away, you pull to the side. And by doing that, it kind of cuts that adhesive off. Notice that this one is a smooth line adhesive. So this is not dotty. And let's see if it'll roll off. It does roll off. It is much firmer than either of those two products I just showed you, though. So that's nice. It's very strong. It is the Tombow Power Bond Adhesive. Okay. The reason I wanted to talk to you about this in the packaging is it's really important that you read the packaging of the product and make sure it will do what you're purchasing it for. That's the big thing is making sure whatever you're buying works with whatever you know project you're using it for. And typically by reading, you'll know. So that's the Tombow Mono Roller Adhesive. Um, if you want to see this one in action, I noticed that... Um, Gina K from Stamp TV, she uses a lot of the Tombow Mono Runner. So if you want to see that one, check that out. I'll put a link to her below. Speaking of that, if you want to see this one in action, I'll put a link to Paper Prairie and Ink below. She does a lot of Tombow um, use. So I'll do that so you can see how she uses it. Okay, what is next? Still talking paper crafting. If you guys have seen these at Michael's in the dollar bin or the 99 cent bin, this is a double-sided adhesive dispenser. Um, it says on the back it's great for scrapbooking, paper, photos, card making, and other paper crafts. I purchased this, again, for those little classes that I do because they're really inexpensive. Here's the downside. You get hardly any product. Can you see how little is in there? 
it looks like a lot, but you got to remember this guy's tiny. So it's very little product and it is a dot adhesive. This little guy rolls back, which is super cool and it stays on and I will put it next to this other one. See the dot adhesive? Also notice how skinny it is. I'm not sure these are the best bargain for their money. They do stick. They do fine just like any other dot adhesive, but you just don't get very much. And even though it's only a dollar and it seems like such a good bargain, I think you do better when you buy something in a bigger container. So live and learn. Okay, now let's talk glue dots. Do you see these dots on here? I don't know if you can see them. Hopefully. Hmm. There's one right here. You can't really see it. Glue dots are very, very convenient. One thing I like about them is they are very sticky. This is something that when you put something down, it's going to stay until you pull it away. I also love glue dots for working with kids because they get the adhesive without the drying time. So what I typically do is take it off with the tip of a pair of scissors or with an X-Acto knife, or even if you're working with kids, you can use a pencil tip and pull these off the wrapper. And then I want to show you sticking something down. I'm going to bring over some goodies. I'm just going to grab any old thing out of here. And I'm going to put this little glue dot down onto my work surface. And notice that I just kind of plopped it down. It doesn't really matter because I'm going to cover it up. And then I'm going to stick this in place. Now here's what I like. That guy's on there. See that is not coming off. I really like glue dots for that kind of application. Anything dimensional like that, I love it. You can even get glue dots that have dimension. So if you're wanting something that's fast, precision, no drying time. So I'm trying to get it off of there to show you. See that? It even tore the paper. See it? This stuff sticks, okay? So if you want something that works really fast, really well, and like I said, it's not wet, you can use it right away, use a glue dot. The cool thing too is if I, if I work at it, I can clean it off of the back of here if I wanted to use this for something else. You just have to kind of pick at it. So there you go, that's a glue dot. Let's talk this little guy. I get so many questions about my quickie glue pen. That's exactly what this is. It's called the Quickie Glue Pen. It is made by Sakura. I want to read this to you. It says, replace the cat when not in use. Keep out of direct sunlight. That's your only instructions. It is a pinpoint roller for paper crafts. So basically, this pen writes in glue, which is super, super cool. Well, let me show you why. I'm going to punch a piece of this out <laughs> so I'm not wasting every piece of scrap I have in my craft room. So we have this little flower, okay, or scallop circle, and I want to glue it down here. Let's say that I was using something really delicate. I can take this glue pen and I can draw it on this smaller surface like so. I wouldn't use it for this big of an application. I'd use it for little bitty intricate die cuts. See the glue on the surface? and then I can stick it down. Okay, so it's stuck. See that? The thing about this one that is really important, I want to try to do this. If you hold this ball tip down and rub, you do not get as much glue out as if you hold it to the side and press and go slow. Here you can see the glue is actually pooling up when I'm using it. See it there pooling? The slower I go, the more pull I get. So you need to be conscious of that because you really do need a lot of liquid on, on your project. This, although it is sticky, it's not as sticky as this and it's not going to be as permanent as the thicker one. So when you get this, don't think that you can just go, you know, like this and everything will be cool. It's sticky, but it's not as sticky as if you take it and just take your time and get plenty of product out. Okay? Love this guy. Some people use this one for um, glitter. Some people use it for stuff. I don't use glitter, so I don't know if it works, but some people will, you know, take a spot and say, I want to do a little circle of glitter. They'll take this little pin, draw in a little spot, sprinkle the glitter on it, and that's how they do it. I would say if you can afford one of these to add it to your collection, I'd do it. If you're cutting out things with your Cricut and you want to, you know, stack them on top of each other, if you're putting little intricate pieces on, for example... I keep showing off Becca's stuff, but do you see this? On this apple, she had to glue this green piece down to the black leaves. This is really good for that because you can just draw the glue on and then stick this down. Um, it would be good for this little mouthpiece or for these eyes or anywhere you have to be very intricate, especially this. 
this little portion here is very skinny so you could run this little pin around this so simply and then stick it down so it's really good for getting in those little nooks and crannies so think about the quickie glue pin when you need something like that all right i'm looking at my paper crafting glue and see if i'm to this good stuff yet and i think i am at this point tacky glue you guys have been watching me do my mini album i have used this tacky glue in lots of places on paper when I get asked about glue, the biggest thing is, how do I keep it from wrinkling the paper? Here's the thing. Paper is going to wrinkle when it's wet. So if you're using a wet glue, you're going to have a hard time keeping that wrinkle down. The thinner your paper, the more wrinkle you're going to get. If you're using a cardstock, it can pretty much hold up to something like this. But if you're using a typical paper, it is going to wrinkle as soon as it gets wet, regardless of what is making it wet, if it's water or glue. So you need to think about that. Typically, the only times I use this is if I'm putting down ribbon or I'm putting down embellishments or lace or something that needs something to really grab a hold of it. A ribbon has a fiber to it, so I like to use something wet that'll grab that fiber and put it on the paper. I don't have to use this for paper to paper application because I have so many rollers and so many dry adhesives. I suggest dry adhesive when you're doing paper to cardstock or paper to paper. If you're going to do cardstock projects, you can use something like this, but just remember, you don't need much. You can put some down and smear it around. Let me show you. This bottle's not been upside down. I normally store it upside down. I'll show you. This is my little wine glass from the dollar store, and I store my glue just like this. So sometimes when I'm doing a video and I can't get my glue out, it's because it's stuck on the tip and I have to pull it out. <laughs> See the glue in there? Anyway. So that's how I store it all the time. So here's what I'm saying. You put a little bit out. See how much that is? And then use the tip and smear it. And see how much more glue I got out of it by doing that without having to wet the paper that much more. So this product, I love it for all my crafting purposes, but I do steer clear of paper with this one. I try to use one of my dry adhesives with that. The Turbo Tacky Glue. These guys, I really thought I was going to love, love, love because I like that they're in a pen applicator form. But I struggle getting this product out. Every time I try to use it, it's harder and harder to get the product out. Let me see if I can get in there. Now let's try. All right, after, you saw I did that with my X-Acto knife, which I should not have done, but I struggle getting this out. Somebody told me that it might just be this one bottle because a lot of people like this product. I have a hard time with it, so I'd rather just use my big bottle, but it's basically the very same thing, but in these little tubes, and they say it's stronger and faster drying because it is the turbo version, and I do like that it's the turbo version. It really is stronger and faster drying than the typical craft glue. If you can get this to work for you, it's a really good product, and it does work really good on paper because you can't put out as much product, so it does help you with the wrinkle. Everybody's most discussed gun, right? <laughs> Here you go, an ATG. This one ran out of adhesive last night and I haven't refilled it, so it's just sitting there, so that's why it looks like that. Here's the thing about these guys. When I first started paper crafting, I noticed people using these and I thought, I have to have one of those. And I was like, I just think they're the most amazing thing in the world. I love how fast they are and how you can use them on so many paper projects. When I bought one, I bought this one first, I was not disappointed. This is a great investment for crafting. Okay, if you're somebody who makes cards, does scrapbooking, anything, paper to paper, cardstock to cardstock, this is a great investment. It holds a lot of adhesive. See that big roll? I just refilled this last night, and I just used it um, for the paper bag mini. You can see how much adhesive you get. It's pretty affordable. I mean, you're going to get a pretty good bit of tape for decent price. Here's what I should say. If you shop around, you can find this price even better. Look online if you're an online shopper and you can find this stuff at really good prices. This guy at Michael's, you can use a coupon and I think that Hobby Lobby's carrying them now, but you can use a coupon on this and that's how I got mine. I've had it since, um, I had to replace this after our house fire, so I've had it several years, probably three years now. They hold up really well and um, I can't say enough about it. If you can afford it, get it. This one puts out a one quarter of an inch adhesive. You can see that there. This one, when it's hooked up right, puts out half an inch. That's the big difference in these two. This one does a half an inch piece. This one does a quarter inch. 
this one's purple, that one's pink. But I love having the two different guns because if I'm doing something that's fairly large, I like having this half inch adhesive just for more surface space versus the quarter inch. For card making, this is plenty because you have plenty, you know, one quarter inch is plenty for card making. But if you can't afford both, do it. They're great to have in your stash. You can get these glues or these adhesives in acid free or not. If it's not acid free, it's cheaper. If it's acid free, it's a little more expensive. So that'll help you to know which one to get for what style of paper crafting you do. Okay, I hope that helped on those guys. Maybe I should show you how to use it. Let me do that. You use these both exactly the same way. One's just bigger than the other. So say I wanna seal this shut. You put this tip down onto your paper. There is a trigger here. And once you put the tip down, you pull the trigger back and you pull. So tip down, pull the trigger and pull. When you get to where you want your adhesive to stop, you release the trigger and then pull, and that leaves your adhesive right where you rolled it. Notice that this is not a dot adhesive. It's a nice, smooth adhesive. Holds really well. See that? Really well. It is not the strongest adhesive out there. Let's talk about that next. These adhesives are made for stronger applications. These two are what they call score tape, and some people even call it souk wang tape because that's the name that's on the tape. Um, this one is one eighth inch, this one is one half inch, and I have the quarter inch too, but it's put away. These, like I said, are actual score tape. You've heard of this one before. The cool thing about score tape is that it's on paper and you don't have to have scissors to cut it. Now, I don't have any red line tape, but you may have seen that. Um, red line or something called sticky, what's it called? Sticky strip. I think that's how Stampin' Up um, markets it. That one you have to have scissors to cut. It's just as strong as this one. These are both very strong adhesives, but this one's cool because you can just tear it. So if I just wanted to put some on here, I could just put it down, okay, put my finger there and tear, and I don't have to have scissors for that for, for that part of the project. And then, of course, you peel this backing off and you're left with a adhesive. See how wide that one is? This guy is sticky. Okay? It is sticky. It's going to hold well. You see a lot of people who do mini album binding using this type of product because it's so strong. I use it in my mini albums a lot because it'll hold up for a long time. So if you are a mini album maker or you're doing something that you want to hold up for a really long time, this is a good product. Also, if you're a 3D project maker, if you make 3D products like paper bags or milk cartons or something at a cardstock, this is kind of the strength you want. Something stronger than a tape runner, something faster than a liquid adhesive, this is the way to go. Some of these kind of guys. Now, like I said, this is true score tape. This is a product that I get from Jamie at Punch Place Plus. It does not have a name. It's just, I've been calling it sticky tape because it's basically the exact same product. You stick it down, you peel this off, and you have the sticky. This is a quarter inch, by the way. See that? Um, actually, I think hers is measured in milli millimeters, and I think it's three millimeters. I'm not positive on that, but you can see that on her website. Now, I'll link you for this product below. The reason this product is important for me to show you is that it is very economical. I think by not having a name brand, it's much more affordable. So check out on her website when you're shopping for score tape. Compare these to this. And I've been asking some of my subscribers that have purchased this from her to let me know what they think of it. And so far, everybody's loved it. It works just the same to me. I have not seen a difference. But if you see a difference between score tape and this product, let me know. Um, love this for stronger adhesive. Let's talk about glue sticks. I don't know if y'all are interested in glue sticks very much. This is a glue stick that boasts permanent bond and dries clear. It will go on in a color. Well, this one goes on white. Sometimes you'll get them in blue or they'll be like gel colored or whatever. This one goes on white and it smears out like this, almost like paste, like when we were in school, how we had paste. I do not like these. <laughs> they tend to, when they dry up, they tend to get brittle and release whatever you stuck together. I've not, I've not found one I'm happy with. If you find one you like, put it in the comments below for folks if you have a glue stick that you really, really enjoy. I've never found one I liked. I even bought some really, like an EK Success one that I thought was really good. I did not like it. Um, I hope would be really good. This one says it's extra strength, permanent bond, and I just don't love it. You notice, I mean, it is totally full, <laughs> but it's not my favorite. 
I guess if you were doing kids crafts and you wanted to do something that was, you know, washable off their hands and stuff like that, although it's acid free and photo safe, it is non-toxic, so it's good for kids, but not my favorite product. Um, I steer clear of this one. This sounds bad, right? But here's what I'm saying. Don't spend your money on something you know is not going to work. This does not work to me. Let me know if you have one that does. Okay, we're kind of getting out of paper crafting, but I do want to talk about Mod Podge a little bit. Mod Podge comes in different finishes. I have several finishes, but I just brought these two out to show you. This is a matte finish. This one is a hard coat finish. This one is a water-based sealer glue and finish, but that's what matte, that's what Mod Podge is. It is a water-based sealer glue and finish. So it's three products in one, which is super cool because I do like to save money. Um, this product being matte, I use all the time. Where I tend to use Mod Podge is on canvas crafting. I do, I mean, if I put something on a canvas, I typically cover it in Mod Podge. If I'm going to do something that needs a good sealant, this is what I typically go for. So um, Mod Podge is kind of a product un unto itself. You can actually find um, recipes online for making this yourself. I'm going to read to you what it says it is. Um, to use it as a sealer, you apply a thin coat, let it dry for 15 to 20 minutes between coats, and then you just keep applying until you get it like you want it. For a quick finish, apply a smooth, moderate coat and be done with it. For a textured finish, you can apply a thick coat and leave your brush strokes in it, which is super cool. If you want to build up the finish, you can apply five coats of this and have a nice, thick um, seal of it. Um, you can use it for puzzle saving. It cleans up with, um, with soap and water. A lot of people talk about how Mod Podge stays tacky, and it does. Here's what, it doesn't stay as bad as the Tombow. Like, it, just, it just has a grip to it. Here's what they tell you to do. If, to eliminate tackiness, apply clear acrylic sealer over the cured Mod Podge. Well, to me, that's kind of double the work, and I just put the Mod Podge on, and after a while, I feel like that kind of tackiness or grab goes away. But I use this a lot for, you know, 3D crafting, mixed media, um, sticking things down like that, especially things I want to seal in place. Um, you probably can do a lot of YouTube searches on just this product alone and learn a lot about it. But I think most crafters have this in their in their collection and need it in their collection because it can do three different things. It can be a sealer, a glue, and a finish. So I'm not going to stay on Mod Podge too long. I think you probably could find out a lot more about this by just Googling Mod Podge. Let's talk about spray adhesives. I do not use spray adhesive unless I have to because it makes a mess. It goes everywhere. I don't care how I do it. It goes everywhere. But this stuff sticks. I don't know why I even have this because I don't like to use it. <laughs> I just think that it makes such a mess, but it's good for everything. Pictures, fabrics, paper, glass, foil, cork, metal, plastics, wood, film, felt, cardboard, canvas, leather, rubber, and foam. It will stick anything together. It really will. It's very, very sticky. Some people have said that they use this to re-stick their Cricut mats and things. I can't do that. It is too sticky for me for that. Um, I don't remember what I bought this for, but I bought it for something specific. Um, so I do not use this very often. It is acid, acid free and photo safe and it will stick everything together. But if you're going to use this, you need to make sure you're, you tape off your surface or something and make sure this doesn't go anywhere because the overspray will hit everything. I noticed the other day on an ATC that Jane used some spray adhesive on stencils and she does that a good bit. I've watched her do it. The trick that she uses is she holds the stencil with a tweezer and she sprays this over her trash can and then it does wash off when she cleans her stencil. So if you're a stenciler, this might be something you want to think about. Just a really thin coat to stick down your stencils while you're using those with paint or paste or what have you. So that's what a spray adhesive is. And E6000. This stuff, I know you've seen it talked about in the crafting world. Everybody loves E6000. I feel like you need this in your stash. E6000 is a one part epoxy. That's what it is. You don't have to mix it up. It is clear. And trend. It is clear. Um, it is industrial strength. It is flexible, paintable, non-flammable, waterproof, safe for photographs. And the big thing I like about it is that it is flexible. I do like that. It doesn't crack and peel. Um, it is strong to smell, and, <clears throat> and this tube can be difficult to use. So you'll have to kind of play with this tube and get used to it. But this is how I have been told to use E6000. I'm going to tell you how I've been told to use it and then how I use it. 
I watched the Frugal Crafter and um, her adhesive video. And what she does is she applies a little bit of E6000 to the back of this part of the project and the back of the part she's going to stick it to. She lets it sit for about five minutes and then she puts them together. Therefore, it's a one part epoxy because you're not mixing up epoxy. It is the epoxy for you. Okay. I've never done that. I've always just put the E6000 on and put it onto the project and stuck it down immediately. And it's worked just fine for me. I love to use this for metal pieces. I like to use it for things that aren't porous. It's something that has no texture to it. This is what I would go for. Um, if I wanted something to stay like beads, I like to use this for beads. Um, anything that's not porous, I feel like this holds really well. Metal and glass and plastic, it's really good for that. So you do need this because it's a step above your your normal adhesive um, and it will do anything. And the cool thing is it even sticks to fabric. So like if you want to put sequins on a shirt or put something on a bag or something like that, this is going to be the way to go to use for fabric. And let's not forget our trusty hot glue guns. Hot glue is for anything you're doing that has some weight to it. I use this in all of my floral crafting. I use it a lot of times in paper crafting. I've even used this in my mini album recently. When I stuck a um, button down to the paper, it works on paper. This is just a good all-around product. I do suggest you pay attention to your temperature of your glue gun. You don't always need a high temp glue gun. The thing about the high temp is this. That glue takes longer to set because it's hotter than a low melt, okay? So it's also very hot if you get it on your fingers or your hands. If you need the glue to have a little more movement so you can set stuff around or move it around, you want to look at that high melt. If you just need to put the glue down with something that is hot glue, then go for the low temp. To me, it's always safer anyway. And when you buy your glue sticks to be safe, just make sure you're buying the multi kind, the one that's for low and high temp, and then you can use it in any of your guns as long as it fits. Um, but you need, you do need a hot glue gun if you're doing any kind of serious crafting. If you're just a paper crafter, it's not a necessity. But if you're doing wreaths or canvases or picture frames or just about anything, you can use this for. So I do love my hot glue gun. The thing about glue, and I know that you guys probably get tired of hearing this at the end of every single one of my videos, but the truth of the matter is this. You're going to find what works for you, and I want to show you what I typically use. Even though I have all of this stuff, okay, here's what you'll mostly find me using on a day-to-day -day basis. Typically, these are the products I use. My tacky glue, my ATG gun, my hot glue gun, and Mod Podge. That's pretty much what I use. This is for card making and scrapbooking. This is for things that need a little extra hold. Of course, we talked about what hot glue is for. And then my Mod Podge is what I use for canvases and mixed media and stuff like that. You can start yourself a small collection like this. And then as you want to try something, just, you know, add a product to, the, to your collection. And before you know it, you have as much as I have, which is overkill, right? <laughs> But again, it is so preference, and I hate to do that to you, but you really do need to try out adhesives. Don't go overboard. Just try one. If you see somebody using something online and you think that really looks like something I'd like to try, try it out. They're not that expensive, and you can use coupons and get them even cheaper, and um, you'll learn the ones that work for you. It's all trial and error. There is no right or wrong. What I use, if you notice, is not what Jane uses hardly at all. We do use hot glue. She has a gorgeous hot glue gun. Um, which I, which I drool over every time she uses it. I never, I don't think I've ever seen her use this particular one. I think she uses the turbo one. Um, she has some art glitter glue she talks about. I think she has an ATG. I'm pretty sure I've seen her use this, but I mean, we still, we craft a lot of like, but we use totally different products because we found what we like. Be sure to read the packages. And if you're not sure, Google what you're looking for or YouTube what you're looking for. And you will find so many videos out there that explain it to you. Um, I hope this showed you a lot and told you a lot about adhesives. I know this can be a little cluttery, and I just thought I'm going to take out what I have and what I use and just show you what I got. So I hope this helped you guys. Your secret later for this video is that. All right, guys, thanks for watching, and I will check you guys out tomorrow with more of our um, mini album. So don't miss that, and I will see you soon. Talk to you later. Bye-bye.